Hey, what's up, gamers? Kraken here. We're back for another episode of Banch Kazooie. We're gonna be playing through Mumbles Mountain. Probably like my second favorite level in the entire game. Mainly because it's like just so easy to play, and because of the music in the level, which I think is kind of banging. Not gonna lie. Look at that. <laughs> and now, uh, if you just saw, uh, I just clicked this little pink kind of like alien creature. It's uh, it's called the Jinjo. And uh, there are about five of these jingles in the game, and their main purpose is mainly just like give us jiggies, keep us like collected upon, because this game is kind of made in the same level as like, I don't know, Donkey Kong 64 or like Mario 64. And the main purpose of them is if you collect five of them, which oh, there are five in every world, you end up getting a jiggy. And we already know what jiggies do. And these these notes here are used to help to open note doors to Crunchy's castle in order to get us through the game. And the more the more notes we get, the easier it is to go through Crunchy's castle because there are note doors that block us through to every world. And as you collect them more, I collect more of them. There's more to get through anyway. So how's everyone's day going? How's everyone doing? Everyone drinking water? Everyone you know staying healthy? That's good. That's good. I'm not. Personally, I've just been eating like Burger King. I'm, I'm pretty sure at this point I'm like 10-15% Burger King at this point, which, which I, I mean obviously isn't a good thing, but I mean the food tastes good so I see no problem to be honest. And I, what I, what I find probably the most interesting being quarantined for probably like two months now is probably the fact of just how much things have changed. Like I know I think a couple days ago, or maybe yesterday, I had um, a physical for the first time in like six months, and it was it was it was just so strange because I'm I know I'm used to going to the doctor's office and you know you go in you talk to the nurse and then you wait for the doctor for a little bit and they come in and you do they go through like you know they take your temperature test your reflexes stuff like that and then you go on your day, but this one was just it was so because I remember first thing first my appointment was at like one o'clock right, and at like twelve forty five twelve thirty they call me and they're like hey. Um, are you, are, uh, well, are you here for, uh, the appointment at one? And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. And they're like, are you ready now? And I'm like, well, I, I was butt naked in underwear. And I was like, yes, just give me like 10 minutes. And then I, I just put on some, some pants or whatever. And I was fine. And, um, I, I got on the appointment and they were asking me, like, for my height and my weight and stuff like that. And they just keeping me, keeping my body, like, still like my body like functioning and because they couldn't do it themselves they measured my height and my weight and so i got all the numbers and i gave that information to them and um they asked me like you know medication and stuff am i feeling like, sick or anything like that and then i got to the doctor and they were, they were asking me like the you know, normal questions like how are you doing and i mean they're just like touching my neck my throat and stuff like that just to get through the appointments so they can get the stuff to write down so that i'm not like looking physically ill they're asking if i had who had covid or t tuberculosis and i was like no obviously and I moved on. And, and that was, everything was going fine until, like, the, like, the, almost the very end. Because they were like, so, we need to see your scrotum. And I was like, huh. And keep in mind, there were like three other people. And it's like this is a Zoom conference, right? And there were three other people in the Zoom call. So they were like, yeah, show us your scrotum. And they were, they were both those, um, the, the, my doctor, the scribe, and then some other PT, I think, like a physical therapist or whatever. And they were like, show us your scrotum. And I was like, no. And they were like, why? Whatever could be the reason that you don't want to just show your scrotum across Zoom? And I was, you know, besides the general multitude of reasons why I do anything but that, I just said, no, I just don't feel comfortable being you know, like, you know, like a rainy. And then uh, they were like, well, if you want, you could just touch yourself and turn around. And I was like, hmm. Now, I do that already without people watching. Now you're telling me I can do it with my doctor. Now that I can get behind, so I, I kind of just like exclaimed, I was like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And granted, they didn't word anything like the way I'm wording it right now, but I just figured that, I'd, you know, might as well. And if you see those little, those, those two little, like, kind of skull tokens next to the chiggies, those are called mumbo tokens. And uh, mumbo tokens are what we use to, to transform. Because we have our, our handy dandy from the neighborhood shaman to come transform with us. 
transform onto the multiple creatures throughout the throughout the game. And uh, I'll just explain that later. Well, I I don't know. I just, I just like to play a lot. I I like the music, and it's, I think it's a very good like first first level game because if you compare it to like like I've been playing a lot of Celeste lately. God, oh, what a game! I can't wait for that game. I'll look on on this, but it, like comparatively, it's just so much more difficult because when it it kind of just like thrusts you in, like like the, the jaws of life, like a child coming straight into the faint out of the womb. What? Child coming straight into the faint out of the womb. They're just like, hey, like they they just explain. They don't really explain much of anything. They just kind of they they give you time to explore. The thing is like a very a very a thing that like isn't really seen in a lot of games. Like the not a lot of games. There's just like a lot of games recently that a lot of games are kind of like they either have a tutorial level or they don't. And this kind of felt like a, a best of both worlds. They, they, or if you find things, they tell you what they are. But if you don't, then they don't. So it's like there's never information that you need, so you never really feel lacking. Anyway, uh, this is the guy in the tree, Mr. Uh, Harambe, back for round two. Uh, I don't know. I, I like this guy a lot. I just thought I, I, I wish his character. She in the bag. Y'all see that? See that? Man, it's, it's cheeked out. Hold up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at a picture of it right now. It's a little, ooh, it's a little thick over here. Anyway, uh, main purpose of this area is mainly nothing. Like, I think it's like, I guess it because of a side quest, but all this is that Diddy Kong over here wants a mango and Harambe won't give him any, so we gotta just steal it from under his tree, and that's that's end of the story. Nothing more, nothing more, nothing less. And. Actually, yeah, that, that's about all that happens. So he's just two chickies down, and then there we go. I'm gonna talk to your bottles, and I think learn our last move for the level. And yes, cool, cool, cool. Round two, come on, Banjo, come on. All right, thank God. I gotta say, in practice, I messed it up probably like ten times. Like genuinely, it took me like almost three minutes when I was when I was getting when I was recording for the first time, and I was like, I can't, I am not doing this again because I just I was, I was just literally jumping for like. 10 minutes, and I didn't understand why I kept falling. But I like that Bottles is like, hey, Bottles, see what Bottles is teaching us that move. He's, he's pretty much like, you can shoot out of your mouth, and then she's like, oh, what else can I do? And she's like, you can shit it out of your asshole. And then Kazooie was like, uh oh. Uh -oh. That, that, luckily that, that, that move was like never, never ever like used in the game, even a little bit, but I, I do only dislike this, this move specifically because it, it, it creates like one of probably the worst moments in the, in the next game, that being when they for some reason decide to make it an FPS, and I never liked FPSs even, even as a child, even now, if I put, put me in, in Halo or Call of Duty and I will end your life, but I, I just never been good at them. But just just seeing them, it's just just a weird start. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I think this was probably one of the one of my favorite. Like that was probably one of my favorite things from this game that was then ruined in the next game because I think Objection. almost every level in the next game has the one of those FPS sections, and I I just never enjoyed them. And it was, it's just really dumb. And it, but the worst parts of the next game are completely full of that. And now that we've learned this little expo, we're gonna just, you know, we're, we're gonna go go with King Kong himself. I think this is like, a, there aren't many like boss fights in this game, but I feel like this is like one of the cool. I think actually, yeah, this is probably like one of the cooler fights in the game because of um. I know if you get hit by an orange, it, it just it, it makes you fall down and you just kind of have to crawl all the way back up, which is kind of annoying. I think I, when I when I first played this game, I definitely died to that like three times because I wasn't really sure what to do because I didn't understand shooting the egg at him. Like I, I just I just went over there and I think if you if you stand there long enough, he just eventually throws things at you for no real reason. <laughs> I love the talent shot. It sounds like Kazooie is just like a... Like, it's like, um, what is it? Like when you're drinking water a lot and start gulping in cartoon, it's like, ah, 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 ah. It's just funny. I don't know. This game just makes me smile. Probably one of my favorite games uh, of all time. Other than, like, Rayman Origins and now Celeste. But that game just makes me smile.
Yeah, like I said, getting five ginger is pretty good. It gives it a jiggy. And you got Banjo's little dance. It's like, ha 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 ha, spaghetti. <laughs> Man, I miss memes. I miss memes so much. Like, but like, uh, I think my favorite ones, the hero one currently is how it's like, ha ha, stonks. Like, I, I don't know. I just always enjoyed the, the whole, the whole new Dutch, Dutch thing that people are adding. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what it is that it just kills me. Like, like the fact, the fact that like, I, I don't even know what it is. It's just that like, like I'll, I'll be sitting, I'll be, I'll be sitting in the toilet with my phone, and someone will be like, ha 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 ha, musica, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be shitting with laughter, and I'm like, that's not, it's like, it's not even, it's not even funny. Like, who? It's not, it's not humor. What is comedy now? It's just, it's, it's, it's literally, literally, it's just people now just saying words in a different language and, and that that's what's getting me going I'm like, but I, I, I'm like, back I'm like, I haven't laughed at a YouTube video in like probably like 30 of me like this one like no, no one's gonna laugh at this one I can assure you I was I was so much funnier in the first one like oh my god if you find this funny uh, see it see a doctor this none of this is funny none of this, this is not comedy this, this is just bad but uh no um when I was like I remember one time I think it was like two years ago I'd just be looking at my YouTube feed and I'd be like none of this makes me laugh and then I just take a nap or something because just nothing nothing really made, made me laugh anymore nothing was really funny and I I I feel like especially now with quarantine is that I've just come to realize that so little videos make me make me laugh other than like actual human interaction. Which kind of sucks, cause I hate people. But you know, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> it is what it is. I've got the milk anyway. Um, but yeah, so this is Mumbo, and he's gonna be not everywhere, but every other world, and every other world he'll be transforming you into an animal or some sort of like insect, and and so you need these Mumbo tokens to give it to him, and when you give him the Mumbo tokens, he'll then transform you. So I think. I don't think in the next world he's in it, or the world afterward, but the one after that he's in it. So it's not, he's not in like every other like, like one, three, five, but in like, he's only in like five of the worlds and not, not all ten of them. But yeah, so we're in a little tournament right now, and basically, we only really need him for like one part of the game, which is why I saved it for last. But I, I just like running around with him because I like, like the sound of his like uh, the sound of his little feet, like a you know, little toesies hitting the hitting the ground. It's like when you when you hit him like a little clacky keyboard. So it's just like, like you know, it's just a nice little sound. It's just it's very like ASMR, and, and I'm I'm here for it for sure. Which is which is well, usually I'm not, but um, for this for for the purpose of right now, I definitely am. So basically, uh, you your the whole point of having the termite is because with the talent trap beforehand we couldn't climb up these little like ramp things, but now we can with uh, with with our termite buddy, and we hit 100 100 notes and we get a one up, and all bottle says that you can't leave the world with them, but your note score will save. That's basically just of what he says, and so I. And also, you can't attack with a lot of these, a lot of these transformations. So usually, it's just better to run around, run run around the, uh, run around the enemies. Which kind of reminds me of when I was at work yesterday. Um, so I I have these two coworkers, Will and Bill, not not related as to why their names rhyme, but um, I I like Will and I despise Bill. Genuinely hate that man. I can go days on days about why I dislike that man. But anyway. Um, I believe Bill was like, would airplanes exist if, if birds weren't, if birds, you know, would air, if birds didn't exist, would we have airplanes? And, uh, me and Will both were like, probably not, because airplanes are kind of based on, like, you know, the shape of birds, right? And, I, I and like, you know, that, that's like a, a normal, common, you know, it's, it's a, it, it's a common mindset, right? But au contraire, I guess, Bill was like, Bill was like, no, you idiots, obviously without planes, we would have helicopters, and I'm like, well, no one's saying we wouldn't have helicopters, and Bill was like, well, no one's saying that we wouldn't have helicopters, and then he's just like, listen here, dunderbrain, if we didn't have planes, we wouldn't have helicopters, so obviously we're gonna have helicopters, and I, personally, I, I just don't understand 
like his like his mindset even a little bit like i don't i don't i, I didn't get his because no one was saying that helicopters wouldn't exist like first of all because there's no animal that like that shows the point of helicopter that there's no there's no animal that directly mimics helicopters so therefore they'd probably exist even before it, it would definitely exist without the existence of planes but he just wouldn't get it out of out of his mind that helicopters weren't that helicopters wouldn't exist and, I, and he was just like her yelling and our boss would come out and he was like so what's what's the problem and then and then i had to explain that the fact that his own question that he had asked would was getting him so worked up that he was yelling at his his other co-workers for genuinely no reason and i i was i was i was getting flustered i was i was like and he was i was getting flustered because he was yelling at me and i was like i didn't i didn't I'm like, you asked the question i'll give you our, our genuine opinion and then he just started yelling and i'm not really sure why i, I just don't get it oh also uh new character alert this is uh brentilda so brentilda's purpose in the game is she's going to tell you three three interesting things about brentilda and they don't matter right now but later in the game they're going to be like a questionnaire and they'll ask you all about these kinds of these things so it's good if you find her in the game you want to remember everything that she says now because i'm an idiot i'm not going to <laughs> or i'm just whenever we get to that point i'll just rewatch this video and, f and, f and look for all of them but mainly i'm not gonna remember them just because i think it's better I think I think it's funnier if if I if I have to guess it and be wrong and then spend like ten minutes trying to trying to kind of beat the game. And so we've unlocked the world number two, Treasure Trove Cove, which is a nice little beach feel, which is a good feeling for you know summer. So uh, Treasure Trove Cove is actually probably my least favorite world, other than like the next one just because i feel like it's kind of big for no reason and i never really like it, it, it reminds me of super mario sunshine which is like probably my favorite mario game 3d wise but i just could never get behind it i like the music was good and like the the songs the songs like the the atmosphere is very good but i could just never really get behind it we'll be tackling treasure trove gove and i'll see you there have a good one yes